I think. Are we going to wait here, Pete? Let's see what she does. She might just be doing a little circle. Okay. Okay, let us know when you're live, folks. Uh, we're waiting for your comments. Do you have your phone set up with comments? Um, in my jacket pocket is the charger with the extra battery. In. See. All right, Nadav, will you just let us know when you're live? Peter's still getting set up with his with the comments here, folks. If we are live, welcome to Malamale. It's good to be back live again. And um, we are currently looking at a tree, and there is a leopard just out of frame right now. But you're going to wait until there's some people in the chat room and all of that to show her to you. It's the Piccadilly female. And she currently has two kills in this apple leaf tree. There's one over here where I'm pointing. And there's another one. I don't know if you can see it from there, but it's hanging up there. Okay, are we live there, Pete? Uh, yes, we are. We are live. Folks, I don't know how many of you there are. This is um, just happened very... We just decided to go live on the spur of the moment here. Um, welcome to Malo Malo. I am with Pete, who I'll introduce in a moment. Um, we are with sitting with a Piccadilly female, right opposite camp. In an area called rhino pens you might have heard me talking about rhino pens in previous live streams and we are sitting at the base of an apple leaf tree and um, in the tree i'm just going to point it out is an impala that impala did not climb that tree that impala was hoisted up the tree by the piccadilly female so she obviously hunted that impala and then decided to hang it up in the tree just for safekeeping, so other predators like hyenas or lions don't come and steal it from here. They like to hoist them in leafy trees, just so that there is a bit of cover from the sun, first of all. Um, you can see that carcass is currently in the sun, so the Piccadilly female may come and move it, but also from vultures. And in the tree is actually a second kill. We can't see it all that clearly right now, but it's a waterbuck calf. And it's quite amazing that she's made two kills and hoisted them both in the same tree. It does happen from time to time. Yeah, um, let us know what you think. Welcome everyone. I don't know what you see there on the comments, Pete. Um, yeah, Gareth, people from Botswana, Northern Ireland, Asmi from India. Welcome everyone to the eastern parts of South Africa. Yeah, as Gareth said, we here with the Piccadilly female. Um, when we left camp this morning, we found tracks uh, within five minutes of leaving camp and the tracks were headed west from this general area. And we followed the tracks about three or four, well, maybe three kilometers westwards from here. And then we found her coming back the other way along the same set of tracks. So what she's done is she'd killed these two animals, had stashed them in this tree and she had then gone to suckle her cubs she's recently given birth we're not sure where the den is yet but we have a we have a rough idea now so where were those tracks leading to pete where you think the den site may be Just in the manuleti river um uh, <laughs> west of twice drive extension uh, excellent <laughs> okay So the cub of the M. Sequeni female, the 3-3 three, three spot pattern cub of the M. Sequeni female has been hanging around that area. Uh, we got some video footage of him just two days ago where Peter's talking about. I don't think the Piccadilly female will appreciate his presence in that area. Um, so just quickly, uh, Charlotte Sneiman, um, will she come back to her kill? She is here at the moment, she's just lying down in some long grass. 
she was at the base of the tree when we started live streaming we were hoping that she would ascend the tree but she's done the opposite and she's yeah just gone stationary for now uh, but if she when she does leave the kill she will come back um, after she's done suckling her cubs uh, Muhammad um, we could zoom in but there's not really much to zoom in at the moment we can maybe try go for the impala okay we're gonna go, go for the impala carcass just uh, hold on for a second while I so while Gareth's readjusting there um, wild UAE asking how old the female leopard is um, born in so 2014 January. 2013 December uh, is it yeah then I've got my leopard idea <laughs> Um, yeah, um, give or take a month, but she was born at the end of December 2013. Um, not too far from where we are now, actually. So you can see pretty much center of screen, maybe in the top half of the screen, is the impala that's hanging over the branch of this apple leaf tree or rain tree. And uh, I'm going to try and zoom in on the waterbuck carcass that is behind the branch currently but let's just see if we can get it in frame i think we might be able to get a leg there we go oops it's going to take more than just my little adjustment that i could do mm -hmm. here but if you look center of screen i'm just going to point it out oops. so those there you can see a little bit of red look, i can't Tell you exactly what that red is. It's a bit of flesh from the inside of the skin, it looks like. But you can see the legs hanging over the branch there. That is a waterbuck calf. So the Piccadilly female currently has two kills hoisted in this tree. The tiger woman asking how many cubs she's given birth to. We can only guess at the moment, but typically leopards will give birth to between one and three cubs. Um, so we we guess she probably gave birth a few weeks ago um and yeah if i had to hazard a guess i'd say probably two judging by the amount of suckle marks on her or what i saw this morning uh, gareth muhammad says thanks for the zoom in you're welcome muhammad where do we have people from around here uh, from Germany. Germany. Uh, that's just do from Germany. Uh, Ali from Kenya. Welcome, Ali. TC Michigan asking if we're going to see any elephants. Um, so we're going to focus on this female leopard, but we are close to the Sand River at the moment. There's always a good chance that elephants will come down to have a drink. It is quite a warm day, or well, it's shaping up to be a warm day. There's a good chance that they'll pop down to the river. Another Ali from Iraq. Welcome. Gabriel from Canada. Tiger Woman is from New Jersey. A few South Africans. Welcome to all the South Africans. I know there are quite a few locals that join us for our live streams. When I say locals, that's uh, people from the Lofalt in White River and Nalspreit area. Charlotte's asking, is it usual for a leopard to make two kills so close together? Um, or is it due to nursing babies? Well, the fact that she does have cubs means she does. there, there is more pressure on her to um, eat and to have a good milk flow. Um, but, yeah, it's not... Uh, more often than not, you'll just see them with one kill. But it is not uncommon it's not it's very far from being unheard of just seeing them have two kills in the same tree i think there's some record on mala mala gareth do you know what it was for the impala lambs there were it was close to double digits of the number of impala lambs taken up one tree by a leopard i don't know that again but it doesn't surprise me it was near the windmill oh well but so in screen there was a uh black-headed oriole that was feeding on a hairy caterpillar and um, it's just flown off now
and the Piccadilly female is coming into screen now, bottom left. I don't know if you can see her there. I'm going to zoom in on her a bit. She does have her head up. Just pardon me while I work with this. I am filming off of a cell phone, so it's, uh, it is difficult to keep it still, first of all. Do you want me to do this and you do the comments? Or yeah. Not yeah. be easier. Huh? Yeah, maybe. Gabby from Joburg, welcome. Uh, Pete's just taken over the camera work for the time being. I'm better at camera work and Gareth's better at comments. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, Ari's from Singapore, Dylan Morgan, welcome back. Ezra Mateus, hi from Namibia. Um, hi from England, TC Michigan, Paris. Hi to Anne and Jan in Cape Town as well. I know you tuned in. I don't know if you've, uh, if you have commented here, but I just want to say hello to you. Gabby saying hello, Nadav, from your old teacher. <laughs> Was Nadav a diligent student um, before he started later sightings at the age of fifteen? Curious to know, Gabby. Let us know. Hi from New York. Okay, so, morning from Vancouver, Dizzy 1369, welcome back. Awesome student, Gabby says, well done, Nadav. Not only a good, a, an excellent businessman, but it sounds like you're a good student as well. Good morning from Germany. In fact, so that, for those of you that are just joining us now, uh, we are currently sitting in an area known as Rhino Pens, which is opposite Mala Mala Main Camp. I'm going to pan across to it now. So, Peter's going to give us a view of the camp. Over there, and this is Gareth. Uh, hi, folks. <laughs> Nadav saying he doesn't know his teacher's first names. <laughs> well done, Nadav. So Mala Mala is situated between the Sabi Sands Game Reserve and the Kruger National Park. We are wedged between those two reserves and we are currently just outside of camp. The river is in between ourselves and camp and we are in the heart of the Piccadilly Females Territory. Just over the hill, out of screen to the right, is Piccadilly Triangle. We have driven through there before with them. Um, the Gauri Mail and the one Kambula Lioness, and that's where she gets her name from. So we are very close to the center of her territory. N Naved saying it's a bit early. Naved, we have um, decided to live stream a bit earlier just because we see that there is an opportunity within cell phone range. And we've taken that opportunity. So folks, for those of you that haven't joined us before, uh, we are on, very, on a very large reserve here, the largest privately owned Big Five reserve bordering Kruger. And um, our cell phone reception only covers about 10% of the property. So we go live when and ca as and when we can, rather. And... Um, yeah, so we just, it's on an ad hoc basis. If you do want to know when we go live, click the bell icon on Latest Sightings YouTube channel and they will let you know when you'll get a notification if we do go live. Uh, for a lot of the sightings that we aren't able to stream live, we are filming and putting on our YouTube channel. Just go to Mala Mala Game Reserves YouTube channel and you can see some of the other sightings there. Some people asking about uh, the lockdown. We are currently under lockdown conditions here. Um, we don't have guests at the moment. It's just the skeleton staff that are here at Mala Mala to make sure that the property is maintained and just to have feet on the ground. So 
So Josh Pony asking, I assume she's aware of our presence. She is very much aware of our presence. Um, she's not too concerned about us. She's just lying in the shade, taking a rest. Uh, their senses are far more acute than ours, so she would have been aware of our presence even before we were aware of hers driving in here. And a lot of these animals, like uh, if you imagine you're a cat, if you have a cat back home, um, if it's unhappy, its ears will go flat, it'll snarl at you. These animals, if they are... Um, yeah, if they're uncomfortable with your presence, they won't leave it up to your imagination to guess whether or not they are. They'll, they'll let you know in no uncertain terms. So Terry, my sister, asking where is she? I'm going to zoom in. So Pete's just going to zoom in there. Hi Terry. I don't know if the rest of the family is there. But hi to Chris and Alex and Ethan and any of my other family that might be watching. And I'll also just say hi to Pete's family if they're watching. <laughs> <laughs> so the signal's not that good in Zambia. <laughs> okay, so Pete's from Zambia. He's not sure whether they'll be able to get a, a view of this. Yeah, so you can't really see her now on the phone, but she's lying down in the patch of grass over there. She's pretty much center screen there. It's just a, on the phone, it looks like a black lamp. We don't want to go and disturb her right now. Um, I think we've got ourselves nicely set up here. Pete. The kill, sorry, killers, the one killers up here is a, a young impala, probably born over a year ago. And then there's a water buck calf hanging over there. You can just see its legs. Andrew June Churongoma saying thanks guys doing a great job. Thank you Andrew. We appreciate that. Just do asking if we can speak German. I certainly can't. Nein. Nein. <laughs> so Pete's uh, counting in English. Ich sprach nicht Deutsch. <laughs> <laughs> no. So no. Unfortunately neither of us can. I think Pete can speak a bit of Turkish. <laughs> so maybe you guys can meet in the middle somewhere. <laughs> Hi Annette. Welcome back. For those of you that might be watching on your televisions, you'll notice that I am speaking to people. Uh, it's not that we have tourists on the vehicle. Uh, we do have this feed on YouTube. Um, you can comment on the sighting. So if you go on your phone, and I'm guessing on a computer as well, you'll see all the comments, comments that people are making, and we are just responding to those comments. Latoya saying thank you so much. This eases the Kruger eases the Kruger cravings. Thanks, Latoya. And then one Rosina Dato one Muhammad um, is asking when are they going to feast on the kills? We are waiting for that. She has fed on both of these carcasses, and uh, there's not all that much left. Um, how long do you reckon these carcasses have been yet, Peter? Uh, I guess maybe two days. Yeah, so Pete's saying two days, and we showed you earlier, it's right across from camp. We can see this tree from the place that we eat our meals, from the dining room. So it just goes to show you that things can happen right in front of you, and you might not be aware of it. And um, this leopard must have been up and down this tree over the past two days without us noticing. And um, Pete and Bruce finally found them this morning. Yeah, uh, Joshua Marie asking, have the number of rhino poaching been reduced during lockdown? Joshua, it's very difficult to tell. Um, we don't get the numbers fed to us um, all that readily. So yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to answer that. Maybe after lockdown, a report will come out. I'm not sure. I'll be Mayo asking where the leopard is there. Uh, Peter's zooming in central screen. She's sitting up now. He's looking towards the kill. And then as we arrived here, Pitt was um, mentioning that you might go up there because those kills are in the sun. You might want to move those kills into the shade. We're hoping that that happens.
Faisal asking any hyena cam sniffing the other site. We haven't seen any yet, but I, I would imagine that there have been a few hyena around here. They've got an incredible sense of smell and they hear very well. And there's certainly hyenas in camp every single night just across the way there. So I'd imagine they would have picked up on the scent and uh, possibly heard the Piccadilly female chewing through bones and would have come and investigated. Tiger woman asking, do we think we'll see the cubs or are they going to stay hidden after nursing? So we typically only view cubs after six weeks. Uh, we know that a leopard or a lion has given birth to cubs. We give them about six weeks before we start investigating. Don't know how long it's been now. It must be close to six weeks. Oh, we're not sure. Yeah, we, we, I, I, I'd say maybe around the month at a guess. Born Free asking, do we know of any good books about the history of the Sabi Sands? So there are two books. I don't know if the one is still published. Um, it's called To Everything It's Season. I doubt whether it is still being published. Um, but there is another book where they have used a lot of the data that has been collected here at Mala Mala. It's called Shaping Kruger. And that's an excellent book in terms of the history of the ecology of the Kruger National Park. And because a lot of the data came from Mala Mala, um, it's pretty fair to say that, you know, we, we were once a part of the Sabi Sands. We now border the Sabi Sands and the Kruger National Park. It's fair to say that it'll give you a good idea on the history of the ecology of the Sabi Sands as well. Um, in terms of history, the, I don't know, interesting stories in that, um, I think, yeah, to everything it's season would be a good start, but I'm not sure if that's being published still. Melang86 asking, what is the name of the leopard and how old is she? The name of the leopard is the Piccadilly female and she was born, Pete just corrected me, in December 2013, 13, right? Yeah. yeah. So she is now just over six years old. What animals are in the area around us? Currently, there's a lot of small animals. There's lots of butterflies, birds. Uh, we can't see any larger mammals. There's two antelope there lying was, dead in the tree. There was the unfortunate uh, mother of that waterbuck calf was around here and then a squirrel is <laughs> going crazy behind us. So Gabby asking where the leopard is. Um, I'm going to try and... So Pete's going to try and zoom in on her again. I wonder if it's worthwhile getting we'll a bit getting closer. closer yeah, I think, yeah. I think Folks, so. so we are going to get a little bit closer to her. Uh, she does have her head up. Hopefully she doesn't move. Um, but we just pardon us while we just slowly make our way closer to her. We have set up here because we're hoping that she climbs a tree. Um, but I think let's go and show you the leopard. We might come back uh, to this area in a moment. I think maybe even if you if you just go and then we can just reverse back. If okay. She so Rizad, welcome back. Okay, folks, are just going to move now. TB, I don't know if that's Tubbs. Tubbs. Tubbs Butelezi. If that is you, TB, saying zoom in. We're going to drive a bit closer. It's quite typical of wildlife. Once we decided to uh, come closer to her, she'll probably get up and move to the tree. So how's everyone's view there now? Let's have a look here. I don't know if you can see this leopard now and uh, maybe if you can get her a little bit to the right the comments I think come down the left hand side of the screen there 
with him. Okay, there we go. It looks like people are seeing it now. Greetings from California. Richard, welcome. Paul and Neil, how long do they live for? Uh, in uh, female leopards will often live longer than males. Same with lions, actually. Um, so there's a good chance that she could live up to as old as 17. Um, male leopards have to do a lot more fighting with regards to uh, maintaining a territory. So quite often when they start getting a bit older or over the hill and younger, stronger males will come in um, and evict them. But uh, for the most, yeah, as a kind of general average, female leopards in this area at least to about 17 years be a good knock. So her mother, this this leopard's mother was known as the Kekalezi female. Almost uh, considered, almost be considered the, a queen of Mala Mala, a royal bloodline even. She lived to be very close to 17, and she was probably one of the most successful mothers we've ever had on the reserve. She was killed by the southern Avoca males to male lions. And the Piccadilly fem female in screen here has since taken over her mother's territory. So someone just asking what uh, her name is there. Uh, no, Pete's just said it. But she is called the Piccadilly female. Hi, Pat Schaefer from Cape Town. We're not quite sure where the leopard cubs are. Um, Pete, so to answer Annette Lane's question there as well, um, asking, doesn't she have cubs? She, we think she does. She's got suckle marks. And uh, Pete found her tracks going back and forth from this tree this morning. And he's got an idea of where he thinks the den site might be, which is basically um, further behind this leopard, probably by three or four kilometers in a river known as the Manyaleti River. And someone just making the comment that it doesn't look like Kruger. Um, Ernest Kahn, the landscape doesn't look like the KP. Ernest, the Kruger National Park is absolutely massive. Mm. And... Um, Certainly in this area, just north of Skakuza, uh, the landscape is quite similar to this. But you are correct, there are parts of the Kruger National Park that look completely different. So they've got all sorts of different um, ecosystems in the Kruger Park because of its size, because of all the different latitudes, lines of latitude it covers from north to south. And um, there's a lot of altitudinal difference. There are parts of Kruger that look very different. There's also quite a lot of difference of, um, with the geology then and that has a, a big impact on the ecosystems that thrive and survive above the soil. So you are correct, there are places in Kruger that look very different to here. I don't know what she's just seen there. Okay, Roy van der Valt asking where do we get the names and what will we name the cubs? Pete, do you want to answer that one? Uh, yes, so when let's take her cubs for example that she gave birth to recently. Um, in the beginning, we will refer to them as the cub or cubs of, and then the mother's name. So she's called the Piccadilly female. So those cubs will be called the cubs of the Piccadilly female. Um, as they get older, and we can tell the sexes, maybe the male cub and the female cub of the Piccadilly female. Once those cubs reach independence and the mother pushes them away we will then refer to them as either the son or the daughter of the Piccadilly female that's mainly because she will it won't be too long before she gives birth again and she'll have you know, more cubs which will be called cubs of the Piccadilly female um, so therefore the original litter they will be referred to as the son or the daughter of the Piccadilly female until they start becoming territorial um, so, yeah, that's how we name our, our predators. When they start establishing a territory, they'll start scent marking, they'll start roaring. And the areas where they start doing that is where we will name them according to that area. So quite close to here is an area called Piccadilly Triangle. 
Um, and this is where this leopard started to become territorial, hence she's called the Piccadilly female. We find that this way of naming um, predators helps us to build up more of a story around them and to understanding their movements, other than giving them a, a name like uh, like diamond or yeah, yeah, something to that effect. Yeah, you know their territories may shift and um, over time, so it does help to know where their initial territory was to see how those shifts take place. This is, in my opinion, one of the prettier female leopards on the property. Uh, someone asking, um, and I guess it ties in a bit with what Peter's been saying. Where do you get the na Oh, wait, that's not the question. How do you keep track of them and know which, which is which? Um, so we will identify different leopards through their spot patterns um, and uh, well firstly it's you know these animals look although they might look the same they all all leopards look the same to you know to us at the first glance if you spend enough time with them um, you will see that they they all they all look different so for example uh, when, we, when we found this leopard this morning, without even having to look at her spots, I could see that it was this female. She just that just that she looks different. They have, you know, they're not all carbon copies of each other. Um, but when in doubt, you refer to this. We refer to the spot patterns. So the the spots on either side of her nose above the whisker line, um, the number of spots on each side, and people also make up patterns, join the dots with the spots on their foreheads. Um, yeah, so that's how we can identify different leopards. So if you go to our YouTube channel, Mala Mala Game Reserves YouTube channel, if you go and look up the last, there have been a few videos now on leopards. If you see any leopards in the uh, thumbnails, click on them in maybe, maybe the last four or five videos we've produced and you'll see there are cue cards um, or leopard ID cards which will, if you pause on it, you'll see, you know, there's the, it shows you who the mother is, who the father is, how many litters they've had, and what their spot pattern is. And that spot pattern is very handy in helping us identify them. Um, we may start putting that online at some point, uh, for those of you that wish to get to know our cats. Uh, just let us know what you think about that idea. And then Stornish saying, I guess this is pre-recorded. Stornish, it is not. Uh, we are watching or we are streaming live right now so Iron Tyson opinionated South Africa has just responded to Iron the Kruger Park is the size of Israel a little smaller than Belgium Okay, Jamir 3, great to see you haven't lost your leopard finding talent, trying to come back soon. Greetings from Australia, Rosemary. Rosemary, please do come visit. <clears throat> Tiger Woman saying, I'm surprised you remember the father with how many males will breed with a female. It's a good point, Tiger Woman. Uh, we are not, with some of the leopards, we are not 100% sure who the father is, because you are correct. If a female's territory overlaps with a number of male leopards, she'll try and mate with all of those leopards. And um, then it is tricky to know who the father is. Panthera, which is a research project that's been ongoing in the Sabi Sands for some while now, has been doing work here, and um, they have managed to genetically it will collect uh, dung samples or scat samples and to figure out some of the leopards at least who the fathers are in most cases will be if we're unsure of who the father is there'll probably be there'll probably be two on hardly ever more than three different options of males so um yeah it's not like a domestic cat on the streets where it could be you know 10 20 other males this is mostly 
two males if we're unsure. Did you, ex did you explain why they mate with different males? No, you go for it. Um, so just to build on to that uh, question, um, you might wonder why would a female mate with different male leopards? So the the biggest killer of leopard cubs is other leopards and um, normally male leopards who aren't the fathers of the cubs. If they happen to st stroll into the territory and come across a female with cubs and the cubs aren't his, he will then try and kill the cubs and that will also help to bring the female into estrus and then he can mate with her. Um, so what the females will do is they will so for example she this leopard in front of us does have cubs now um and the male leopard who is the father we believe is a well the one we believe is to be the father is a rather a nervous male so we don't see too much of him but if another male leopard so for example there's a male called the flat rock male who holds territory not too far from here even though she has cubs now she will try and mate with him if she comes across him but it won't really be mating she'll be pseudo mating it'll be fake mating and attempt to try and convince him should he come across the cubs in a couple months time that they are his so erica just commenting that leopards don't roar <laughs> we we do say roar although we do know that it's rasp um it's, i think just old habits maybe die hard they vocalize <laughs> they vocalize there we go um and then also asking, do we know the leopard Hosanna? I've heard of him. Uh, I know that he's somewhere in the Sabi Sands town north, but I can't say I know him very well. We've got uh, plenty of cats here to keep us busy. So we focus on the ones that are kind of on our property. So if Pete is correct, or if the den site is close to where Pete followed the tracks to this morning. What's interesting is when I saw the Piccadilly female mating with that nervous male leopard, he was um, quite close to where Peter's describing uh, the two of them were mating there. And it's, you know, we were hoping that if she was mating with this nervous male leopard, if we gave them enough space, that that male leopard that is a little bit skittish might see that the Piccadilly female is completely relaxed around the vehicles and he too would also start relaxing around the vehicles. Um, we've had two opportunities. I think Roan Ravenhill uh, watched them mate on one occasion and I watched them mate on the second occasion. Um, but they, he certainly did not uh, relax. We gave the male leopard plenty of room and we kept it to a one vehicle sighting because he is a nervous le leopard. But yeah, he certainly did not relax. So our guess is that he is maybe a Kruger leopard. Um, generally, the blocks of land in Kruger National Park are way bigger than the blocks of land here in the Sabi Sands. When I talk about a block of land, I'm talking about an area in between roads. So there's quite a dense road network here in the Sabi Sands. And um, yeah, in the Kruger National Park, you cannot off-road either. So... In the Sabi Sands, a lot of these leopards have grown up around vehicles and are completely tolerant of us. TV saying leopard's roar is called sawing. <laughs> And uh, let's see, 10 points for whoever can tell us which tree is in the back here. Pretty much the tree that most people think about when they think of Africa. Just in the meantime, Brian Elmer asking, is the skittish male the Maxim's male? He is a little bit skittish, but he has started to relax around the vehicles, the Maxim's male. He's a beautiful leopard. But it is not him. Um, he actually relaxes as the sun sets. He becomes an incredibly relaxed leopard. And some leopards are like that. Uh, we also believe that he's maybe from the Kruger National Park. 
but uh, yeah, it's not the Maxim's male. This leopard currently doesn't have a name. We just call him the nervous male in Mouthly. And uh, this Gabriel, there's a few acacias here, acacia, acacia. But it's a very good. So it's a good start. Start. But there are many, many, many different types of acacias. <laughs> Dizzy 1369 coconut tree. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> there's camel dwering. No, unfortunately, no camel dwerings here. Camel thorns. Which is also a type of acacia. Okay, here comes the Piccadilly female. Let's go I back think to we are her. going to reverse quickly because she may climb this tree. Tell me if we right could... Oh, down again. Oh, down again. <laughs> but I think let's stay here for a bit, Epic. Yeah. What do you think? Hi, Petra and Marty Bosman, welcome back. It is an acacia. I wonder if... Uh, Tortillas, Brian Elmar, there we go. Acacia Tortillas, that's the one. Ten points. Ten points. And then Dizzy1369, uh, asking seriously, sorry Dizzy, I didn't mean to um, poo poo that question about the coconut tree. There are no coconuts in the immediate vicinity, but should you travel maybe 150 kilometers east of us, you will find coconut trees along the beaches of Mozambique. So you're not far off. My apologies for <laughs> Disregarding your question, but there's uh, yeah the coconuts grow mostly uh, closer to the ocean. An opinionated ZA saying umbrella thorn. That's correct. <laughs> so folks, this uh, Piccadilly female is just. Lying down again. Let me go for it again. Um, Pete's just going to take over the comments again for now. We thought she was going to go straight to the tree and climb up it, but she's just going to get a little bit closer to her again. First, going to go back just so we give her some plenty of room to work around. Then we'll get a bit closer. Comes. Did you tell me I was looking like yeah, in frame there. Anyway, it's fine. Okay, there we go. The, so this is the money up. shot. Get ready to phones next to you. Get ready to phase save this and share it with your friends. It looks like she might climb up the tree now. Oh, <laughs> she's having us on. <laughs> she was lying in, in that exact position when we first arrived here. Terence Gibbs saying, is it true leopards can haul twice their weight up a tree? They can certainly haul very large items up a tree. Um, I'm trying to think if I've ever seen one haul actually twice its weight. Can you think, Pete? No, but the books say they can. Yeah. So I think you'd read that in, that in the literature. But I think with all these animals, um, you know, they're very, just like humans, you know, each person is very different from the next. And you get large, strong females, you get weaker, smaller females. It also depends on... How much they've eaten lately uh, you know if they haven't had many good meals they're gonna have less energy but yeah <clears throat> they certainly can haul extremely heavy uh, prey species up trees and they can hunt very large prey species what is the i know we found the island female on 
three occasions, was it two or three occasions last year within a month. It's, it's adult kudu bulls. Oh, yeah. It was in the, it was, there was three times, I think, in two months. Yeah, three times in two months. The island female, and she's a particularly large female leopard. And unfortunately, we didn't see her kill it, but we could only assume that she took those kudus down. You know, had a lion or a wildebeest, uh, a hyena taken down that adult kudu, they wouldn't let her feed on it. And we found her, she fed on almost the entire ca uh, carcass. Yeah, and one, one of them could have, if it was just one, then, you know, it might have died naturally. But for three of them to die naturally in a short space of time, not likely. Okay, so Pete's screen has just gone off and now I'm looking through all these personal messages here. I'm just going <laughs> to ask him to. Let's <laughs> see my wife's. Yeah. I don't know if this is charging. Yeah, there we go. Now it's charging. Yeah, it's on 17. Brooks Stevenage asking, are there any impalas around? I can't see any at the moment, but I wouldn't be surprised. I can see one. We, uh, yeah, there's a dead one <laughs> hanging in the tree. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if herds start making their way down to the river to drink. It is starting to warm up now. So TV asking, Obviously not Tabasani Butalezi, who is a ranger here, but is currently at home. I thought TB might be Tubbs. <clears throat> TB just asking a question on vehicles. Why aren't you driving electric cars? So TB, for a few reasons. Um, we drive a fleet of Land Rovers currently. And... We have been driving Land Rovers since we started game viewing here. And that has been very important in getting the animals to become tolerant of our present presence. And the reason is that we have very strict driving protocols. And we all approach these cats in the same gear, and in the same manner, in the same vehicle. So they get used to the, the sound of that specific engine and they do become tolerant of the vehicles knowing that you're going to behave in a specific way. It's become habit for the rangers to drive in that way and these cats know exactly when, how and where we will drive. So they don't feel threatened by our presence at all. Should we all of a sudden just change to a different vehicle altogether it's going to take um, the cats some getting used to. Now, we are not 100% sure of um, how electric vehicles might work out here. I think from a guiding perspective, it'll be really nice not to have the noise of the engine and, and be able to listen out for uh, yeah. alarm calls and that. But, uh, yeah, it'll definitely help in that regard, but it'll, it'll take the animals quite a while to get used to it. So the only comparison you could make now is if you, uh, um, I have to, uh, if you had to, if we had to stop on the top of the hill here and drive down towards this female leopard, she wouldn't really react. She, if she was sleeping, she probably wouldn't even lift her head. But if we drove to the top there and if we switched off the car and free wheeled down here, she will most definitely react to that. Chris, Chris Lean and Ruben Spies want to know how many spots approximately on a leopard. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> Not a clue? Uh, Not a clue. Many. Yeah. One, two, three, yeah. many. RMB saying the tree looks easy enough to climb for a lion to steal its kill. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, actually, not far from here, the last one of the, about a month ago, there's a big, what is that, a Marshall Eagle? No, it's a Jim the Jim. Is it a Jim the Jim? There was one in the tree flying around or? Yeah, it's uh, in that tree that the Piccadilly female was in there, in that jackalberry. Yeah, so there's a Jim the Jim in right. the area. 
So there's a tree behind us, a jackalberry, and uh, one of the or the last time I saw the Piccadilly female in this area, she was in that jackalberry tree, or she got chased up that jackalberry tree by a lioness. And um, that tree is a lot more difficult to climb than this one that we can currently see. Uh, the Piccadilly female went very high, it looked like she was sitting on top of the leaves at one point, and the lioness couldn't get all the way up there. But yeah, this tree, a lion could definitely climb. I know someone's made the comment to hippo could climb this. Hippos are notoriously <laughs> good. Yeah, I doubt whether a hippo could climb it. They are a lot more nimble than you would think. I think a hippo tried to climb it, that's why it bent at an angle like this. <laughs> yeah. So opinionated saying I looked it up, averages eight hundred to one thousand two hundred spots on a leopard. Thanks, opinionated. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and Reuben asks if buck are the, their favorite prey. So, um, in this area, leopards kill mostly impalas, which is a type of antelope. And uh, they also kill a lot of bushbuck, particularly along the river uh, banks here. Bushbuck as their name implies, like to live in quite thick bush. When we talk about thick bush, it's thick uh, sort of vegetation, which generally grows where there's lots of water along riverbanks. And that's perfect stalking um, area for a leopard. The way a leopard hunts its prey is to stalk right up close to it and then to pounce on it when it gets quite close. Now, uh, antelope that live in those kinds of areas would be maybe not favored but more easy for the leopard to catch and if you uh, I, I recommended a book earlier called shaping kruger and they have all sorts of stats on what leopards catch and feed on and um most of those stats actually come here from our data capture here at mala mala i would recommend reading that book if you are interested in this kind of stuff Margaret thinking that our Hina, if it was really hungry, would be able to climb that tree with a running jump. <laughs> I'd love to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Hina might get to the first fork and then not quite know what to do from there. And then Erica asking, does leopard urine smell like popcorn? It does smell quite similar to buttered popcorn. Now, shame, here's the poor mother waterbuck. Um, that's been hanging around here. It's obviously the mother of the calf that's hanging in the tree now. I think, I don't know if Pete, can you see it there? It's just behind the tree at the moment. Yeah, she's behind the tree here, but she hasn't left this area. Then 4X Gold. Do hyenas and wild dogs ever battle over prey and such? You don't hear about it compared to lion hyena conflict. They do indeed. Uh, there's the waterbuck. And I'm just trying to think of the name of the video where a hyena steals a carcass from two wild dogs. Do you remember the name of the video? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, our video. Yeah. Um, I think it's a misty morning. I think it's hyena steals kill from wild dogs. <laughs> okay, <that's good>. that's <laughs> imaginative. Good, good title. Pete. <laughs> it helps us remember these. Gareth, things. I think you came up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on our YouTube, uh, on our YouTube channel, there is a video that we put up um, called "Hyena Steals Kill from Wild Dogs." Very aptly titled. It's in the Rangers in Isolation playlist. Yeah, Rangers in Isolation on the Mala Mala Game Reserve YouTube channel. You can go and have a look there and see some wild dog hyena interaction. And Francois Norkia asking the name of the Kruger book. It's called Shaping Kruger. And by that, Mitch Reardon. By Mitch Reardon. And that uh, photograph on the front cover was taken here at Mala Mala by Gerald Hind. It's in reception, yeah. that exact same photo. <laughs> So Margaret's saying she still hasn't seen the leopard. They are incredibly camouflaged. 
and she is lying at the base of the tree and to the left of the trunk. She's just got her back to us now. And thanks Nadav on it as always. He's posted our video there. Hyena steals kill is the title. Yeah, thank you. Gary asking to show where the leopard is. I think Pete's just done that. I'll go in again. She is busy scratching now. There we go. I think leave it there for now. You'll be able to zoom out fast. Yeah. Luca Moreira, we're trying to show her to you now. She's top left corner of screen. At the base of the tree. There's another animal way in the background. That's the water buck. So that is the water buck. So there are two carcasses in this tree. And uh, the one is an impala carcass, which is quite easy to see. We showed it earlier. And the other is a water buck calf carcass. And we suspect that this water buck that's hanging around this area is the mother of that calf. Welcome to On the Turb from the US of A, Idaho. Then a few questions here, asking how old a leopard can get. So, um, a female leopard will typically live longer than the male leopard. One of the reasons for that is uh, with males, there's a lot of competition for territory. And as incumbent males kind of get a little bit older past their prime younger the up-and-coming males will vie for their territory and males can die as a result of those territorial fights or from injuries sustained by them generally males will live to about 13 14 years It'll be a, almost max that and females can live up to about 17 She, the leopard you're looking at now, is, um, my maths is terrible, but 2036 years old. Just over six, yeah. Yeah. And then on the turb saying, thanks, bro. Love the lion vids. You are welcome. Uh, we'll keep them coming. Then Nadav just saying most of my Kruger leopard sightings are like this where you just see the head. <clears throat> yeah, Kruger, I think I've, I've grown up in the low fault, gone to Kruger National Park um, very often throughout my lifetime. And the first real sighting I had of a leopard was here at Malamala. They are very secretive animals and you don't get to see them all that much. And um, we are renowned here for having relaxed leopards so it's we're very very grateful to be able to watch their natural behavior on a daily basis which not many people get the opportunity to do and i know out of the ranging team leopards will rank right up there for most of the rangers um you know you do have to be quite patient watching them but when they do do things they are incredible especially when they start climbing around trees and yeah, they're incredible animals and you never, you know, you can read as much as you want about leopards in books and they never cease to amaze you or to bend or break the rules that you've read about in books. So someone was asking earlier if there are any animals around here. I don't know if you can... Hi, that's... <laughs> if you can see giraffe. a giraffe... There's a giraffe in the center of screen there, quite far away from where we are now. Then Wild UAE 87 asking, do we see antelope, the sable antelope here? We are very fortunate that we do get to see sable antelope here. We see them mostly in winter time. We are currently in autumn. We haven't seen some since the end of any since the end of last year, but um, we will most likely see in a few months time. They generally walk in from Kruger National Park and come and drink in the Sand River, right in front of Rattray's camp. Actually last year we recorded 39 sightings of sable. 
for you know, during the course of 2019, which is a remarkably high number for this area. Catherine saying goodbye. Thanks for watching, Catherine. Going back to sleep now. Not sure where you are, but thanks for joining us and for staying up to watch this feed. Dizzy 1369 asking, will the leopard go after the giraffe? I think that giraffe is, yeah, I don't think so. It's, giraffe is a lot bigger than a leopard. So there have been cases of male leopards catching young, very young giraffes. But yeah, it's a bit uh, too much for a female. Okay, and there's that poor water back under the tortillas there. Yeah. So Dizzy 1369 asking about calves. So Pete has just answered that question. Perhaps a male leopard. Gary saying leopards are fast but have a much shorter sprint distance than cheetah. Yes, this is true. They prefer to stalk. And then run in on their prey. But they, they do adapt their hunting style. I have seen leopards running through herds of impala lambs. Just very willy-nilly and very randomly without even bothering to stalk. Just running up and down. Um, I guess hoping one trips up or decides not to run. And then it wasn't successful. Um, but yeah, it was interesting to watch. So the dove saying, I wonder if she gets too close, what the leopard would do. I don't know if she'll risk getting too close. Uh, you know, if this, if these carcasses have been up here for the last day or two, and um, you know, maybe if the calf was still alive, she might come and try and chase the leopard off. But I'm pretty certain she knows that that calf is dead by now. Well, water bucks can also be quite uh, stubborn creatures. I've I've seen lions think twice about uh, going after a water buck. I've actually seen a one-on-one -on -one water buck uh, chasing away a lion. So I think an adult female water buck will probably be a step, a bridge too far. Then John Gilfillan, are there brown hyena in the area? No, not that we are aware of, John. There has been one reported sighting many moons ago, and it could not be confirmed or verified. So, uh, no official records in recent history. But, <laughs> but if you go to our YouTube channel, and you go and look up the Great Camera Surprise, I think it's called. The Camera and Trap Surprise. The, the Great Camera Trap Surprise, or the Camera Trap Surprise. Um, you will see another very rare animal, which we didn't, did not think we got here. Oh, nice, Pete's making some coffee. Yeah, sorry folks, if you hear some weird noises coming from behind the camera, it's uh, it's coffee time out here in the bush. And then the Van Fierens asking, please answer, how do you know how old it is? So we have data or records of these, particularly the leopards and the lions, it goes back for more than 40 years now. And uh, after every single game drive here at Mala Mala, there is a ranger that is on duty and has to fill in the game report book. So anything that was seen out in the field gets filled out with all the details. 
and it's an incredible data set that we have. And because these cats are so used to the vehicles, uh, you know, especially when a, a female leopard has cubs, we see them almost on a almost on a daily basis once they are used to the vehicles, just because we know where to look for them because they don't move too far from their den sites. And um, yeah, we you know we know these leopards well enough to know. Like for instance, this female was found. Uh, we know when she last mated, and then we count the days. It's about three months that a leopard is, is pregnant for. <clears throat> and then we start looking for signs when we see her after three months of whether she is lactating, first of all, and then whether she has suckle marks. And there is also a video of the first suckle marks that was discovered on this particular leopard, the Piccadilly female. And for the life of me, I can't remember that video's <laughs> um, name. name. Yeah. I can't remember either. <laughs> but yeah, so basically what, what happens is, so we'll be seeing a female leopard for a while, we'll see her mate. Um, normally if, if that mating is successful, then it's, it's almost about three months uh, until she gives birth. Um, but so during that time, if the mating was successful, we'll slowly, especially towards the end of the pregnancy, you'll really start to see her, um, well, it'll become more obvious that she is pregnant. And then there'll be a distinct difference to um seeing her after she's given birth because um there'll be lots of uh, suckle marks around her teats and um, so we'll then know it's okay we saw her on monday and she had, didn't have suckle marks and we saw her again on saturday and she did have suckle marks so somewhere between then she's given birth um so in our records we don't have they don't have birthdays but rather birth months so for example this female leopard we're with now we know that she was born in um, December, which was towards the end of December, um, but we don't give an exact day. It's highly unlikely that you'll you'll know the exact day. There. You see this female water buck is starting to come a bit closer here. It's a little bit sad, actually. So Gary, just asking that question, um, how do you control animals from being killed off by other animals? Well, it's quite important for certain animals that other animals be killed. Now, this leopard is far from vegetarian and actually needs to kill other animals to survive. So we don't interfere. Either she goes hungry and her leopard cubs go hungry. Or they don't. But she has to kill in order for them to get nutrients. And then just curious, are there any children watching this? Always nice to hear from the, the kids out there. And Paul, welcome. Question here, when did she catch the baby water pack and the impala? We guessing maybe maybe two days ago. And then Gary asking, he, he says he understands that, but is overkill a problem? And if so, how do you replenish the breeds? So we live in a relatively open system. Um, we live in the Greater Kruger National Park, which is the size of Belgium. So the animals here do kind of, the ecosystems maintain their balance just naturally. And every now and then there are natural cycles that do kill off animals that are becoming overpopulated. Like we just came out of a drought and uh, the very large hippo populations got reduced in number, as well as buffalo populations. Oh, here we go. So I'm just going to see there's lots of children here. Okay, Molten Shadow Locks. Chris, Christine and Ruben. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to be pronouncing these problem, pr uh, properly. <laughs> Jovan, Bernie van Fieren, Luca Marrera, um, Christine and Ruben Spies.
and then <laughs> someone here saying one one Line, 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 one, 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 one. So I'm three years old. <laughs> I turned three today. Happy birthday. I hope that's not you typing. If it is, that's pretty incredible. Um, then someone saying they're old. Then happy birthday, 11. Lawrence Jr. Hello, Gareth. I was sleeping the time you started to live stream. Sorry, Lawrence. Um, but you're awake now. Not much has happened here since then. And then... 11 saying, did you really believe me? Obviously I did. I can't fact check these things. So we rely on you to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all children? I agree, does he? Aren't we all children? That's perfect. It's handy. Coffee time. Coffee. Ah, nice. Thank you. <clears throat> and uh, if any of you do have children, and uh, you want to keep busy, there's a great initiative. There we go. <laughs> Pete's just busy pouring the coffee there for us. Get back, Pete. There's a great initiative by the NICD, which is the National Institute for Communicable Disease in South Africa. And a friend of mine who works there, one of the scientists and doctors, he is a virologist, has started a Facebook page for all the children out there. He wants to hear how you think we can kick coronavirus. So if you are bored at home and want to make a video or draw a picture or send your idea in, please do that. You can send it to Kids Kick Coronavirus. It's a Facebook page. And all the scientists here in South Africa that are doing a brilliant job and are working very hard at the moment are taking inspiration from the youngsters. I know Morne and Eben brothers sent Ahmed a email with a picture of a big military jet flying over a town and dropping soap bombs, which is a brilliant idea that inspired ah Ahmed to start this Facebook page. So if you do have any children, if you want to keep them busy, maybe that's a suggestion. The NICD is listening to your suggestions. Thank you, Christine and Ruben Spies, for putting up that address. Uh, Ranger Nick Null saying RCG, <laughs> <laughs> RCG in 20. <laughs> I'll be back, Nick. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. So RCG, just to get all of you guys in the loop here, is um, it stands for Rams Cricket Ground. <laughs> <laughs> and Rams is uh, one of the old Rangers houses back in camp. And uh, he's obviously looking for some other rangers to play some courtyard cricket with. So, <laughs> so we might end this live stream shortly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Lawrence just asking, uh, where's the leopard? So Lawrence, if you see that tree, okay, I think Pete's going to do something there. But the tree that is at an angle, just to the left of the base of the tree, you can just see her ears and a bit of spots. We've got the, the camera at wide angle because if she does move, there's a possibility she's going to climb that tree and we would like to get that in the frame for you all. There's a swarm of bees flying overhead. Mm -hmm. And TB saying, can you please explain in a simple language what an opportunistic hunter is. Thanks. Um, so I think the best way to, if you use this as an example, so this female leopard has got two kills up in a tree um, and she's lying down sleeping at the base of it. It's quite a warm day. So, you know, you, the last thing you'd expect her to do now is to hunt. Um, and she probably won't go out of her way to hunt. But if a, say for example, an impala was, um, uh, an impala ram was being chased by another impala ram because they're about to enter, well, they're entering the rutting season now. So there's something that's happening at the moment. So uh, two impalas chase each other and the one happens to run right past her or close to her. 
she's not going to let it run past because she's got two kills in the tree and you know she's got enough food she will use that opportunity and she'll kill well she'll try to catch it at least um i think i don't know gareth could you explain it sorry peter i actually wasn't listening. <laughs> so <laughs> so gareth often doesn't listen to what i say um <laughs> no. i'm starting to wonder <laughs> sorry I'm, I'm trying to read the comments here and i'm terrible at multitasking but uh, i trust Pete, peter's been in this business for a long time he's probably seen more leopard behavior than most people on the planet so whatever you said there peter, <laughs> thank you oh. i'd imagine it was spot on <laughs> um so just tie to job Javad from Iran. Sorry, Pete. And then someone asking you, Amy Alexander, are you from Zimbabwe? I don't know if you're talking about Pete or myself. So Pete is from Zambia and I am South African. I'm pretty local. I grew up in this area in the low felt. But I guess... Uh, was, Pete, that, was that an accent-related question? Yeah, or maybe a mumbling-related question. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the fun Firin's asking, when will we have the next live show? I'm assuming you're talking about these live streams and unfortunately we can't give you an exact time or date because this is a very large park and because only 10% of it has cell phone reception, we are filming this off of a cell phone, we have to find animals within that 10% range to bring you these live streams and we can't predict when, where or how we'll find these animals. So um, if you click the bell notification on latest sightings on their YouTube channel, you'll get notifications from them or subscribe to any of their social media platforms as well as Mala Mala's social media platforms. That's going to be your best bet if you want to know when we go live. And Amy saying, okay, yes, your accent sounded Zimbabwean. Still not sure who's there. <laughs> but yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess it's mine. Hey, Jacques Proust. Proust. <laughs> Proust, I think. Proust. Proust, Proust sounds, sounds right. <laughs> Hi, here, JP. So he's one of the ex Range Rangers, join, ex Mala Mala Rangers joining us here. Which part of the park are we broadcasting from? And Paul, we are just outside of the Kruger National Park. We are broadcasting from Mala Mala Game Reserve. So if you're sitting at Skakuza camp, if you've ever been to Skakuza and you're sitting on the deck having lunch, looking over the river, if you look across the river, um, there's the Skakuza airport and basically north of that is where Mala Mala is. So yeah, we're not far from Skakuza at all. Luca just asking where the mother water buck is. She's disappeared. We don't know where she is right now, but you won't be far. No, she's, be, she's made several appearances during the course of the morning, so I'm sure she's going to come back again soon. And then Alison MacDonald also asking us, can you tell us where in Kruger we are? We aren't actually in Kruger. We are in the greater Kruger National Park. Uh, we border Kruger National Park. We don't have any fences between us and them, and they are to our east. The Sabi Sands Game Reserve is to our west, and we are wedged between the two. And you want to know road names, the closest road to us currently is called Rhino Pens. <laughs> and it is one of the areas where white rhinos were reintroduced into the Kruger National Park many years ago. So Born Free saying, on my last trip to Mala Mala, I enjoyed the Nyala around the main camp. It seems they are scarce everywhere else. Any ideas of numbers in Kruger? Um, so I'd, if I'd first like to just go back to the beginning of that question, that would also depend on what time of year you were at the various camps. Because, um, so firstly, Nyalas do like, to be around riverine thickets on the edge of rivers mostly but you'll see them a lot more in camp during the drier months so for example now though you will still see one or two nyalas walking about camp if you had to come here in september you'd probably see about 30 nyalas walking through camp so i think it'll also depend on uh, what time of year you were at the various camps but also if the other camps you were at were along a river
Michael Jacques, hey? CL. CL. Craig Lever, welcome. <laughs> Luke is saying he's seen a leopard from Skakuza deck. Do you think it's her? I doubt it, Luca. Um, it could be one of the leopards from our area, but we are quite far north from Skakuza right here. Uh, these leopards have less than a five square, or a five by five square kilometer, and well, the females are even less than five mm. by five. Yeah? I think yeah. I'd say that's about a male leopard's territory size here, yeah? which is 25 square kilometers, more or less. <clears throat> but the females are even smaller than that and we are quite far upstream. We're about 20 kilometers upstream from Skakuza. Upstream, I'm saying, upstream along the Sand River. Jacques Price saying, wow, Peter's working hard to enunciate his words. <laughs> He's doing a good job. Uh, Jacques, Jacques. I'm just, Jacques, I'm just going to make you jealous here. If you, this will come into focus. There you go. <laughs> Enjoy your coffee. In Cape Town, I'll enjoy mine with a Piccadilly female. <laughs> <laughs> so Jacques, we're hoping that this continues. Um, it's just on to you. Yeah, it's just yawning a bit there. We're hoping that this continues to the radio so that you can hear what Pete's saying when he finds animals. <laughs> And then I'm just trying to see, uh, we are missing questions here because uh, they are coming thick and fast. And to the Spice family, please, please answer C. Brislin's question. Now I'm just going to try and find where that question is. Um, uh, there we go. Kristleen would like to know how many cubs are in a litter and how many grow up to be adults. So in a leopard, leopard's litter, there's usually between one and three cubs. And I don't know the, the kind of stats on it, but very few of those cubs actually survive to adulthood. We're just going to keep a little bit quiet now. The Piccadilly female is starting to look a little bit active. So if she does start climbing up the tree, you're just going to keep quiet and enjoy it. But Pete, I don't know if you have a ballpark figure in the meantime of uh, how many leopard cubs make it to adulthood. Um, I can't remember the exact percentage. It's, 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 it's quite a relatively high mortality rate. And as I said earlier, the, one of the, the biggest killers of, other, of leopard cubs is ma male leopards. And then Annie, thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. We'll see you next time. So Vaughan just asking, will we be giving notifications ahead of our next live stream or do you stream ad hoc if you see something interesting? Vaughan, when we can, we do try and send out notifications a little bit earlier. Um, okay, she's, I'm going to keep quiet for a second. Okay, so she keeps on mock charging us. I say mock charging, she's not mock charging at all, but it, it looks like she's wanting to climb the tree, but uh, she's taking her time about it. So I'm going to speak until she looks like she actually is about to climb. Um, yeah, no, she's going the opposite direction again.
Dizzy1369 asking if there are any elephants around. There certainly are. We can't see any now though. In fact, we might need to start driving soon. And in which case, I might have to just put the comments down for a moment or two. Is Eugene Stradom saying, Hi Piet, waar hang die waterbok karkus? Um, uh, I don't know if you are aware, Eugene is not in the appelblaar for us. Um, so as you can see, there is an impala carcass in screen now. And then if I just pan over, it's difficult to see it from this angle, but the water buck is basically back there. Maybe we might get a better angle a little bit later. So we're going to stay put for now. It doesn't look like she's going too far. Joshua Page saying, how's it guys? We're in the Kruger RU. We are at Mala Mala Game Reserve, which is pretty much directly north of Skakuza Camp, outside of Kruger, but bordering the Kruger National Park. Um, Gabriel Afonso asking, can a male leopard take a female lion on? It's very unlikely that that would happen. A female lion is still almost twice the size of a male leopard. Lawrence asking, hey, Gareth, have you seen uh, the white lion in the Timbavati? I'd love to see it. I don't know if it's the white lion that you are talking about, but I have been lucky enough to see uh, a white lioness in the Timbavati. They are truly incredible. Mike Kirkman. Mike Kirkman's taken the day off. Usually he's out here streaming with us. Saying morning everyone. Mike, we got some coffee ready here. It's just a short walk from camp. <laughs> if you're keen. Oh, yes, you guys. Oh, look yes, at that. Goes. Come on. Is that, um... See this leopard is now climbing this uh, dead branch here. It's absolutely beautiful. Brian D saying, did we say, well, uh, wow. Sheesh, I hope you guys saw that. That's really beautiful here. Yeah? Just gonna let her settle down there for a while and then we'll decide whether we want to get a little bit closer or not. But uh, that was truly spectacular. Max says he's got coffee in his room. Thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, my name is Efkin. Greetings from Turkey. Merhaba Efkin. Good night then. Nazılsın? So that is a Zambian speaking Turkish. <laughs> so if you can hear in the background, you can hear some monkeys chattering. And those are one of the alarm calls that we listen to out for see gary hills asking for a proper update here Pete, maybe, you want, <laughs> maybe you want to give them a, a proper official mala mala update as though we would do it on the radio um well gary okay so sorry folks it's not going to make sense for most of you watching this but bear with us stations there's a female ingwe in the uh, central parts of Rhino Pens. Um, she is currently stationary on a fallen over branch of an apple leaf tree. There are, oh, 
beg your pardon, there is visual of two kills. There's an Impala, a young Impala ram as well as a young waterbuck. Both treed. Leopard is stationary. Okay, thanks Peter. <laughs> Keen as a second there. <laughs> <laughs> Nadav says Ingwe and Klachla. <laughs> that won't fly here, Nadav. <laughs> hi Anushka, hi Raul. Fazil, welcome. And uh, 20 years ago, hi, enjoying breakfast here in somewhere island, cheese and coffee. Perfect. Jacques asking, is there space for a third? <laughs> uh, Jacques, there are two bummers in the tree. She's not going to be hunting anytime soon. <laughs> Do a loop. <laughs> and Safwan saying, please. I say keep doing them and do you pre-notify before going live? Wouldn't want to miss this. Safwan Yusuf, we are uh, trying to go live as often as possible, uh, but we are at the net, uh, mercy of nature. So it's when we find animals within cell phone range. We are filming this off of our cell phone. Derek Oxley, which carcass is starter and main course? I think they I don't know, they water pack calf looks to be a little bit smaller than the Impala, so I'd assume that that's, that's the starter. Should we stay here or go? It's a tough one. Mm. So we're a little bit indecisive as to whether we should get closer to her or remain here. Um, and it's because she might climb down that branch as you start moving and climb this tree. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I don't know if you're thinking the same <laughs> thing, Pete. Um, I say if we do go and view her there, if she does decide to climb this tree, we are not going to be in a good position to view it. Um, so to explain to you folks the dilemma we have here. So... Um, Just to translate uh, the dilemma we have here. <laughs> <laughs> the best view of her now would be if we drove around this tree and parked over there. We get a nice head-on shot, uh, you know, probably be a bit better light on her. Um, but the problem is if we do park there and she decides time to come down the tree and then go up this tree where the kill is, we won't have enough time to reposition back here where we have the best view of her going up. So the question asked, do we stay here, wait for it to come down and climb up this tree, or do we go park around there and get a nice close-up shot of her from the front, but risk losing the shot of her going up the tree? Gary Hill asking, Pete, did you check if there are any D&Ds before entering rhino camps? <laughs> Gary, unfortunately, the whole camp is D&D for this whole period of lockdown. So, yeah. And there's a few people that are voting we stay. And then a few people saying closer. <laughs> and we are a democracy, so. Um, Should we say. Maybe we, we can just zoom in on her a bit. I think that phone can handle it. Okay, so we're going to just try and zoom in on her a bit. It does look like she might move again. Okay, there we go. You see, she is looking, she's not looking completely settled. Um, so Petro Mari Borsman saying, whatever is the best and safest for her. That is a good way to make these decisions, Petro. But in the same breath, neither position would affect her in the slightest. I don't know if any of you got her climbing that tree, but if you want to take a 
screenshot and pass it on to your friends, share it with your friends and let them know that we are live. I know we've had our trouble with sending out notifications in advance. Maybe you guys can help us. The only reason I would want to move right now is because you're sitting in the direct sunlight. <laughs> So Eugene asking when was the kill made by her. We're not 100% sure. It was found this morning. But um, by Pitt's guesstimation, and I tend to agree with him, just because he's been doing this for a lot longer, is that it's maybe been around, these carcasses have maybe been in, been in this tree for about two days. Yeah, so normally, I mean, both these carcasses are rather the young animals. Um, but bear in mind that this leopard would have spent... Yeah, you know, maybe half the normal amount of time feeding off the carcass than another leopard would have because she has cubs. So she would have had to leave here, walk you know a few kilometers away to where her den is, suckle her cubs, spend some time with them, and then come back again. So it'll take a little bit longer to consume um, a carcass than it would uh, you know, in, in the normal if it was just her without cubs. Then Smunt Dog Millionaire saying hello from one jungle to another. Mine may be a concrete jungle, London, UK. But the sun is shining. Stay safe. I'll make sure to share with my friends. Thank you. And we are thinking of all of you that are maybe cooped up in indoors at this point. Uh, I know everybody that's here currently loves being outdoors. And we are thinking of everybody that doesn't have the outdoors that we are currently enjoying and we hope that when your lockdown does end you go and spend some quality time out there um can i may i be as bold as to make a suggestion yes here? be bold if we didn't actually park so this is the next option i'm thinking instead of us parking here if we went and parked on the other side behind her and watch it from this from that side, if yeah. she did get down, we would still see her go up. We might be looking through that log, but we definitely still see her go and up the tree. We'd be in the shade. That's and we'd be in the shade. Okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. I'm just going to move around quick. So, should I park nose down? Oh, no, I think nose up. No. Yeah. give your folks an idea that is the view of our Malamala Mala camp one of three camps on Malamala Mala game reserve beautiful setting overlooking the sand river and that beautiful acacia tortillas Oof, that's a beautiful sight right there can actually can you sorry can I just we take a photo yeah sorry yeah, folks, so, I mean, this is, this is quite cool. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on air here. Pete just wants to get this shot. And the comments are, we're not attending to them right now because I'm driving and, and Peter's photographing. Uh, we will attend to those in a minute. What a beautiful cat. Okay, I'm going to try and get these comments back here again. A few people commenting on how she's lying. Sometimes they lie in positions that doesn't look very comfortable, but somehow they always manage to mold the branch they're lying on. Okay, Luca back. 
the view of the Piccadilly female has changed somewhat. I'm sure you'll be pleased to know. She was out of the grass and lying in a tree. Terry Golson, thank you very much. That's, that's appreciated. So once Pete's done getting his award-winning photographs, <laughs> um, I've got a question for Pete, but we'll wait a little bit. Right, Tilly, okay. um, sorry. Tilly's private messaging you there, Pete. I won't tell you what he said. <laughs> 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 Not on live TV, at least. <laughs> okay. okay, there we go. Pete's going to take over. Just now, I go a little bit more, just so when she comes up, a little bit further forward. That's the okay for now. Okay, back to the questions for now. <laughs> Gary asking, how many litters has she had and any success with getting them to depend independence? Uh, no, she's, this will be her third litter, and unfortunately she has lost the first two. Um, in stark contrast to her sister, her sister is called the Sibuya female, um, so they were born in the same litter, and she set up her territory further to the north of our position now, and she has successfully raised one litter and is busy doing so with a second. Um, so hopefully it'll be third time lucky for this female so a few people saying that the quality of the phone is incredible that's good news we can't really see how good the quality is but we do we have had that comment in the past and um we're glad for your sakes and the other in there and then what phone are we using uh it's a huawei i think it's the p20 mate or pro or something like that and then uh, nadav giving pete some advice Saying, Peter, you must share this on Instagram. Nadav, unfortunately, I'm, I've commandeered Pete's phone here. So I'm seeing all these private messages pop up while I'm reading these comments. It's quite entertaining. Um, but <laughs> I'm too scared to multitask um, <laughs> on a phone that I'm not familiar with. And uh, yeah, so maybe... I will upload them later today. Yeah. Perhaps we'll, I don't know. We'll make a plan. So Nadav has been helping us through this whole process. Uh, thanks Nadav. Uh, he's obviously been, well, he hasn't obviously been doing this. He's been doing this since he was 15 years old. He started later sightings when he was 15. And um, yeah, it's an incredible, an incredible platform. If you want to watch animal behavior, uh, I would say that that's probably one of the platforms you should go to first, because he's got so many videos of animals up there that people have posted. Yeah, that is cool. So Pete's just showing me some of the photos he's taken. They're so pretty I good. Show one here. If you folks can see, yeah. nice silhouette shot. <laughs> then Rian Diapel. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly saying Sabuye is one beautiful cat, cat I've seen her physically in the sands a few times we do see the Sabuye female quite often she resides on the oh, here she comes I'm just gonna get ready to move if need be looks like she's gonna go a little bit higher I think she, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's to do with comfort or sunlight that she's moving around there she is starting to pant a bit it is starting to get warm so she might just try to be getting up into the branches where there's a bit of a breeze and perhaps some nice shade and to get away from all the itchy grass. 
Yeah, and then just to answer your question here about Sabuya female, this leopard in screen is the sister of the Sabuya female. And they were both, they are born into the same litter, the Kikalezi female's litter, who is a very successful leopard here at Mala Mala. And when we talk about a successful leopard, um, the Kikalezi female raised many leopard cubs to adulthood. So she did very well in her time here. Oh wait, folks, just uh, maybe we need your commentary. I see, I'm looking on the screen here and Peter's composed this beautifully. But can you see the leopard in the tree? And I'm not sure if the comments are streaming over that leopard. Maybe you can just let me know if you can see the leopard. If you can't, then we'll make it more centered or to the right of frame. TB asking, thank you TB for that. That's very much appreciated. Thus are asking at the same time, what lion pride is dominating the Sabi sands nowadays? I would say the largest pride in the Sabi sands is the, the Kambula pride. He spends most of its time here on Mala Mala Game Reserve. And uh, they do cross our boundary from time to time and go into the Sabi sands. From deer. I don't know if that's from Portugal or Mozambique or Angola, but hi. Or even Brazil. Okay, and then Luca saying the comments are in the way. So we are going to reposition this. Peter's composed it beautifully as though it's a photograph. But uh, we will get the leopard uh, back into screen here. So the comments go down the left hand side of the screen, Pete. So Pete's just working on that. And then someone else saying yes, can see, thanks. I think the people that don't have the comments, I'm not sure. And then Wild UAE87 saying Sabuya's father is the airstrip male leopard, I believe. I believe you are correct. Yes. Both her, this leopard's, both of them, the, obviously, the Sabuya female and the Piccadilly female, are fathered by the airstrip male. So maybe you can help you a bit. How often does she have to feed her cubs? Okay, we'll, we'll get back to you in a moment. Peter's just winning some photographic competitions. Here. <laughs> Trying to. I always come second. Yes, uh, we do see the Nkuhumas from time to time. We've been seeing them more and more often in the last five or six months. Um, they come in from the north of Malamala and they spend some of their time around the Luwati River that runs all the way into the Sand River, right from our northern boundary all the way into the Sand River here in front of camp. They have, yeah, they've come as far as this before. Have they? Mm. So I saw Chris. Pete is saying, I don't know if you saw where camp was, camp is just behind us. So there's a question asking, do these animals come close to camp yes they do in fact they go right into camp and we have if you look on our instagram page you'll see lions chasing impalas through camp just the other night um, which was caught on the security camera okay we are going to reposition again so just um Bear with me for a second, we are going to neglect these comments for a bit. And then just a question here to keep Pete busy while I move. How old is the airstrip male when he died? How did he die? Um, I guess it's... Um, if, if I'm not mistaken, he was um, 10 years old when he died. And uh, he was killed by members of the Marthly Pride, I believe. Um, I think sub-adults of the Marthly Pride who were in the process of becoming independent. He was always quite brazen in the face of danger and eventually caught up with him. But definitely one of the most uh, kind of admired leopards in recent memory on Mala Mala Game Reserve and we are going to get a fantastic view just now. The tree behind me. That's far away. Right. 
Yeah, that's good there. So folks, I, we're using one of our phones for the comments. It's also the phone that my wife with our one-year-old son messages me on. So I'm just quickly going to make sure that I don't have any messages from her. KG1 saying goodbye. Cheers, KG1. Thanks for joining us again. Okay, so Ashok Rani asking, please give details of this live stream. Where is it in the Mare? Uh, we are not in the Mare. We're quite far from the Mare. We are bordering the Kruger National Park in a game reserve called Mala Mala Game Reserve in South Africa. Please um, like and subscribe to all latest sightings platforms. And if you click their bell icon on their YouTube channel, they'll notify you when you go live. Tony Schindler saying, I seriously think you guys need me there in the vehicle to serve drinks and snacks. That's a brilliant idea. <laughs> yeah, Gareth's, Gareth's skill levels have been found wanting, so I could happily use a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pete's coffee is a little bit weak. <laughs> <laughs> Ian Cumming, welcome back. Saying hi from Rustenburg. Oh, look at that. In a shock saying typo. I know Mala Mala or Mala is quite similar to Mara. No problem. So uh, asking the time here, yeah? it's currently five minutes to twelve. So nearly lunchtime, so the snacks are starting to sound. Like a good plan. Sheila's Africa. Hi, Auntie Sheila. Saying thanks for sharing, but ruining a great friendship. So jealous. I know, Sheila, we are very fortunate to be out here. Um, yeah, we're just going to try and bring you guys as much as we can. Your friendship. <laughs> you have friends. <laughs> Pete asking if I've got friends. It's only family, Peter. <laughs> That's what family's for. <laughs> then Ryan, yes, I don't know if I'm Ryan Diapple. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right. Did you not see the Sticks Pride as well? The Sticks Pride have a very long history here at Malamale. Male. In recent years, they've become more nomadic. We used to see them. It's about a 40-year history. Yeah, 40-year history. So Sticks Crossing and Sticks Rocks, the area they're named after, is pretty much central. Is it central Flockfield? But the center of the whole game reserve of Mata Mata. Yeah, central slash northern. Yeah. Tony Schindler, thanks for joining us. Leaving now. 
Nikki Marsh saying she'd love to be here. Stuck in Johannesburg. I think when you guys get the chance, when this lockdown is over, it would be nice for all of you to come and visit all of these game reserves in and around Kruger National Park and elsewhere throughout Africa. These reserves rely very, very heavily on tourism to protect these animals. So while you're sitting at home, cooped up indoors, maybe you should be looking on the internet and planning your next trip to some of these conservation areas. I believe it's something along the lines of patience pays off, Gareth. Yeah. We've been here for what, close on two hours. And all this talk about snacking. Uh, yeah, she's actually bringing the carcass down. It'll be interesting to see where she moves it. We're in a good spot here. The carcass was lying in the sun. And Pete did predict, predict that she might want to move it. <clears throat> Luca, we're going to say goodbye again because you have to go now, say finally, but I'm sure we'll see you back here again. So until then. Tony from London, you did indeed turn up just in time. She looks like she's taking it to not an ideal area for us. We'll just wait her for a little while longer and we'll just see what she does. For those of you who are maybe joining us now and seen her take that kill down, the reason Gareth has suggested that we stay here a little bit longer is because that's not the only kill she has in that tree. There's also a very young waterbuck calf. So we will see now if she comes back for that one as well. However, I don't think that one was being, well, was in direct sunlight. The Impala was, and that's why she's moved it. And then Lawrence Jr. asking if we've seen Mrs. Lapwing. I haven't seen her this morning. Mrs. Lapwing is one of our regulars. And I think, Lawrence, you said you're based at Shingwetsi. That's also a beautiful part of the world, in Kruger National Park itself. Nishka voters enjoying that. And Rade, yeah, he's missing out. I'm sure he's going to be disappointed.
in Ryan asking an opinion on lion prides. Do you think it's nature's way to make space for new pride or pride splits since Martley is down to one, Shimungwe to half and southern pride, but Kambulas etc. might split? Question mark. Um, just ask the beginning of that question again. Just our opinion on lion prides. Do you think it's nature's way to make space for new prides? Talking about pride splits. Um, not necessarily. What, what happens most of the time is when you hear of stories of these mega prides, they, they aren't often mega prides for very long um, because of the that insatiable appetite you can imagine so many adult lions together they need to consistently kill very big animals to um, sustain the pride um, so the Marthly pride uh, that's well so it's down to one now but that was more just uh, what does affect these things sometimes is the power shifts between male coalitions um, and if the existing cubs in the pride are old enough to run away and escape then they will even the females will do so and that will result in a breakaway but that's not uh, kind of out of pure choice by the lines it's more out of necessity um, the kambula pride are actually a double breakaway they are a so the the mangani pride so basically it all started with the mathly pride and what we call the mathly pride our neighbors call the tsalala pride Members of that pride split away and formed what we call the Marsley Breakaway Pride and what they call the Mangeni Pride. Now the Kumbula Pride, also known as the Nsevu Pride, are a breakaway from that breakaway. And with so many lions in this Kumbula Pride now, the question has been raised: um, Will they, will the young, especially the young females who are growing up now in this, in, out of the fourteen cubs, will they also break away from the pride when they get older? Um, I doubt it, for now, um, but we, time will tell. And, then, uh, and the demise of a pride or prides dying out like southern Martley down to one lioness. The, the Ifield pride is also down to one lioness. And um, they actually used to be a very large pride that held the same territory about 10 years ago. Exactly where the Kambula's, Kambula pride's territory is. And then, uh, so I think in, inadvertently that would help, um, you know, f ensuring that one pride doesn't remain in an area forever. Will, you know, if, if the continuous, if there's a continuous changeover of prides, that so uh, there's also, you know, there's new genes coming into the pool. Um, but that also happens. I mean, we we haven't really had a problem with uh, inbreeding or anything because of the male coalitions coming in every couple of years they bring the new genes with them i don't know if i answered that question properly yeah well it sounds good enough i think <laughs> you can get the gist of it ryan did you get the gist of that And sticks and stones saying hopefully the Marthly lioness or pride can do what the black dam pride did a few years ago they were down to one lioness and now they're thriving we hope so the Marthly pride although the kambula pride are initially been very closely related to the Marthly pride and we're the Marthly pride at one point um they've also got a long history here on mala mala so we do hope so uh, if anybody wants to see the Marthly pride the lioness and her cub. We did post a video just, I think it's two videos ago, on our YouTube channel, the Mala Mala Game Reserve YouTube channel. The video is called The Spectacular Safari. Yeah. And then David McCann saying, Pit the heat. <laughs> Are the Charleston males still around? <laughs> McCann. McCann. Um, they are not. I actually believe they were. They rather unfortunately were killed by, I think they were electrocuted by a fallen over power line, if I'm not mistaken. I, I'm pretty sure they are dead. Um, they had moved further south off of, off of Mala Mala. Um, 
and yeah I, I might get the the details on how they died wrong but and I know at least one of them is dead and I believe it had something to do with the electrocution so opinionated ZA thank you for this he's just um, filling all the new people in the chat room filling them in on what's happening here so he says things you missed if you just joined Leopards have between 800 and 1,200 spots. <laughs> Thanks to someone that looked us looked that up. I think it was Opinionated that looked that up. Um, they are on Rhino Pens Road in Mala Mala that borders the Kruger National Park, and they are filming on a Huawei phone. So those seems those questions seem the most important to have been answered. Thank you, Opinionated, for that. That and we were watching <laughs> a female leopard who spent most of the first part of the our transmission in the grass, but. The sighting then became very picturesque indeed when she climbed up this uh, fallen over dead branch and then up the tree behind it, retrieved an impala kill, brought it down and has since taken it into some thicker scrub back there. We were waiting here to see if she would re-emerge because there's a second kill in this tree to see if she'd get that but it now would appear as though she has settled down inside those shrubs behind the trees here and she's probably feeding off that one carcass enjoying some of the shade so so david just uh, i see i get a private message from gnut back at camp they're obviously watching how you gnut um just chiming in there as well as david saying it was the two two of the marty males that were killed by a fallen power line oh, thank you got there the you two go. confused yeah yeah uh, is that dave mccann or no that oh, was david, david. just david, david. It's quite nice when you use a like a normal name that you can say. <laughs> Nothing against uh, your opinionated no, <laughs> Opinionated throws off the other day. <laughs> okay, and then Jacques saying one Charleston male was found with a broken back in Kruger and then went through euthanasia. The other one disappeared. Thanks, Jacques. Jacques, was that the one with the hanging canine or was that the other one that was found with the broken back. Okay, so yeah, I've got to look for Jacques' comments to be able to answer you there, Pete. That's normally what I do with the phone when I'm talking to Jacques is put it down. <laughs> yeah. And Eduardo is saying, are we looking at a tree? We are indeed. And the reason we are looking at this tree and maybe is because there was a leopard in this tree not so long ago. She had stashed two kills in this tree. One impala kill and or carcass and another waterbuck calf carcass. She has since climbed the tree, retrieved the impala carcass that was lying in the sun and has moved it down into the river or along. We've lost view of her now, so not sure exactly where she went, but she climbed down the river bank. And we are still parking here because there's still one carcass in the tree and we are hoping she comes back. see uh, no that's yeah. not gonna work there's too much sunlight so asking where the leopard is is a few people we are not a hundred percent sure right now the last time we saw we saw her she was walking down the riverbank um, behind these trees that are in frame she walked into those two green thickets that you see behind the tree we are staying put here because she might come back and retrieve the second carcass having said that she might not so at some point we might just go and have a look for her and if we don't find her we might just return back to camp and come and have a look for her later this afternoon bye bye Annette thank you for joining us again so Chris Wilson saying, how do you get good enough internet to stream in the middle of a national park in Africa? One of our biggest challenges with live streaming currently is the poor coverage we get on this particular property. Um, so only about 10% of the property is, is covered where we can actually live stream and thus we do it on an ad hoc basis. So we can't let you know when exactly we will go live. The best way is to subscribe to our social media platforms as well as that of latest sightings Kruger and click on the bell icons on YouTube uh, to get notified when we go live. Sorry. 
have a quick look and I might need to get back. Yeah. So we're gonna we're going to go and see if we can get another look of the look at the uh, Piccadilly female, and if not, then we're going to return to camp. But we will say our proper goodbyes if we do not find her. But let's first go have a look for her. Go down this way, I might be able to zoom up, zoom into that uh, water buck. Okay. If you can. I'm wondering if it's a good forward. That's a forward's fine. Isn't it? <laughs> Tiny little thing, eh? Yeah, it's a little circle on his back. Yeah, is this good yet? Just a look. So it's not very clear because of the shooting up into the sky, but yeah, there's little, some remains of a young water buck up there, which she will probably, well, she will come back for at some stage. Lauren's asking if the mother of the waterbuck has left. No, she's back here. No, she is here again, keeping an eye on proceedings. Shame, it looks like a very young waterbuck calf. Yeah. So it is obviously very sad, but we always have to remember that to truly appreciate nature, it's best to observe it without any human emotion. It's a lot easier said than done. Okay, we're gonna go and have a quick look, see if we can spot the new female again. And again, for those who missed it earlier, Across the river there is our Mala Mala camp to the right and the Sable camp or Mala Mala Sable camp to the left. I think she's maybe... Yeah, so as you can see these shrubs in front of us here. Um, it's quite thick and the sun is also behind us and we're right on the edge of the sand river. So she would have gone into the shade of these shrubs which will be also along the bank which makes it nigh impossible for us to get an angle on her so I think we're gonna have to end it there Gareth? yeah thanks for joining us again folks it's been uh, terrific having you on board and we are thinking of all of you at home and uh, please tune in for our next live stream and please go and have a look at our YouTube channel thanks yeah, our Mala Mala Game Reserve is the name of the YouTube channel, same as all our other social media platforms. Um, and we are filming a series called Rangers in Isolation, which is basically what we're doing now, just when there isn't any cell phone signal or mobile network coverage. And those we load up as episodes onto that series. So please um, like and subscribe and uh, tell your friends. I hope you enjoyed this live stream. And uh, until the next, well, until the next one. Yeah, and Nadav, thanks for your help again. Cheers, thanks. I see you, see you awake this time. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>